So if you want your mixes to sound more expressive and more dynamic, there is probably something that you are missing. And in this video I want to explain a concept which I have been thinking about and applying for a couple of years now when mixing songs, and I think it is a total game changer. And it is the difference between horizontal and vertical mixing. We'll start off by talking about some of the basics of this concept and then we will take a deeper dive by jumping into the DAW. My name is Matt Flank, let's get started. So I first want to get to the very basics of mixing. What is mixing? Why do you even mix? So one of the main reasons is to make everything sound in balance. You have all the different audio tracks and you want them all to sound balanced but not too balanced because then things will get really flat and you will lose the dynamics of a song. So when you're mixing, you probably have a couple different steps that you follow that you do for every mix that you know that work. And for me, that is starting off with volume. I start by mixing stri strictly with volume without using any plugins. So I know the balance is right. And then I can add color by adding plugins. So when you're only mixing vertically, all you're doing is making sure that everything sounds good together and balanced and that you add a color where needed. But what I like to do, since the song is also a horizontal timeline, I like to mix from left to right as well. And I know that a lot of you at that point, when everything sounds balanced and you have added plugins to add some color, will call the mix Tom. But for me, at that point, it's only half of the way there. I start by taking a look at the most busy part of the song, so the part where the most instruments and tracks are playing at the same time. I start by balancing out all the levels right there, EQing where needed and adding some plugins for color. Then I go to a different part of the song and check if everything is balanced there too. Then I start mixing horizontally. And I do this first by listening without adjusting anything and I think this is so important which are so many people forgetting is to just listen. The artist that sent you the song that you are mixing probably has a purpose for the track. He has a purpose, he has a certain dynamic that he wants to express. And my goal as a mixing engineer is to accentuate that dynamic that they already want. So I'll start either with the intro of the song, with the beginning or with the part that I'm most comfortable with. And from all the EQs and plugins and balances that I added, I am going to adjust this depending on what part of the song there is. And this can be a bit complex, but we will jump into DAW now to show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so as you can see right here, we have a song. This song is seven and a half minutes long, which is a pretty long song. I mixed this a little over a year ago, and especially in this song, I really focused on the horizontal mixing, which we're going to talk about today. I don't know if I'm allowed to show you how this sounds like before it was mastered and released, but the song is released, so you can listen to it. Link is in the description. I can show you a tiny snippet so you get an idea of the feel of the song. It's made with a lot of analog synthesizers and drums. So now you have an idea of what this song sounds like. I'm going to show you some of the tracks. On most of them I didn't do a lot of processing. I have a utility for volume, an EQ, a sound saturation and then my drum bus. So that's for the drums. And for the synths, for example, you can see that I have done nothing more than some EQing and then some plugins to add some more color. So for example, a multiband dynamics and a delay on this one. And then there is a saturator on this one. Nothing too special going on. But if I take a look at the automation window, that is where the magic happens. And you can see that there is a lot of automation lanes actually, as you can see. You might be wondering why did I do that? And that is to add dynamic and enhance the dynamic of the song. So I'm going to take part of the song where the drums come in as an example. And it is a three minute build up before the drums finally play. So you want the impact to be massive. You want to literally blow someone's socks off. If that's how I say it, I don't know. We're going to take a look at this automation, which is EQ chain eight. So this band right there. Let's take a look. You might not be able to hear it at first, but let's listen to the track in solo. So right before the drums come in, the synthesizer has a lot of high frequencies, a lot of delay going on. It is a lot of noise there as well. And then when the drums come in, you hear this crash 
and this also takes up a lot of the high frequencies I wanted to give some space to the drums and I did that by adding a low pass filter at 2.6 kilohertz so right when the drums come in all of a sudden there is room for the hi-hats and for the percussion and for the crash to be there it doesn't have to fight with the synthesizer it, it just gets some room and then gradually as the song progresses over the course of around 20 seconds I fade in this filter again so if you take a look at that you can see the EQ fading in again and this is something which I did across the entire song so let's quickly recap what we've been talking about so when mixing there is horizontal mixing and vertical mixing and what most of you are doing is vertical mixing which is you take a part of the song that has a lot of elements in it you start listening to it and you start adjusting all the volumes so that everything is in balance and then you add maybe some plugins to add some color to the tracks and what we do next is check for some different parts of a song but we keep it there i don't i don't when i'm mixing so then i jump into the automation window in ableton and you can do this in any daw and i start working from left to right and i start automating the eq i start automating the delay i start automating the multiband compression here's some more delay here's some more eqs and i go from left to right and i make sure that every dynamic in the song every expression in the song gets emphasized and also i reduce and i dug the parts of the song that i feel like clash with some other things that are more important for example the part that we looked at where the drums come in that is right there i felt like the high frequencies of the drums at that particular part in the part of the song were more important than having the noise of the synthesizer so I cut out some of the high frequencies and some of the noise of the synthesizer to make room for the drums. I hope this made sense to you. If it didn't, please leave your questions down below. Or if you have a more specific question, you can always email me contact at mattflank.com and I will get back to you personally. If you want some more mixing tips, I'm actually working on something special, but I cannot show you that yet. But in the meantime, you can subscribe to my newsletter and every Friday morning at 9 a.m. I will send you a production tip. I hope this concept made you rethink what you are doing when you are mixing and I hope it will take your mixes to the next level. Before we end this video, I want to say that if you are struggling with a mix and you want someone else to do it, I think that is a great idea. Someone else can really enhance the dynamics of a song that you simply don't even hear anymore because you've listened to the song that you're creating way too much. And if you want me to do that, you can send me an email. Thank you for watching. I hope you really got out of this video a little bit wiser and a little bit better at making music. My name is Matt Flank. Thank you for watching. Peace out.